Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Tomcat Stitchery. I'm Whitney and today we're going to be doing another tutorial, another pattern adjustment tutorial. Today we are doing the broad back adjustment. Now this adjustment can definitely be for people that just are a little broader in the back shoulders, although this is, this is different than a wide shoulder adjustment. So if you do have broad shoulders, um, the narrow shoulder adjustment that I showed, you would do the same thing. You would just pivot that point out instead of in to the pattern, if that makes sense, but it's the same adjustment. The broad back is really, I mean, this can be kind of an age thing as well, or a genetic thing. As we, you know, on computers, we're on sewing machines and all that sort of thing, our backs become a little bit more rounded. That's just kind of, you know, life. <laughs> anyway, as that starts to happen, a lot of times you may find that you need a broad back adjustment. And that has been the case for me. It's not something I've always needed, but it is something I'm needing more and more. Um, that may be a sign that I need to be working on my posture better, but <laughs> I just need a little bit. I think it also has to do with my body shape. I, if you look at me from the back, I kind of have always been an inverted triangle from the back. Um, from the front, aside from my boobs, I'm pretty much a rectangle. Um, I have a very slight waist, just a little bit of waist delineation in there. I do have some, but not a lot. Um, but from the back, I definitely seem to go, um, more inverted triangle, which is, from what I hear from professionals, uh, I mean, that happens a lot, where you're two different body shapes from front to back, um, which is kind of weird, but there you go. Um, anyway, I a broad back adjustment is something that I need, but I don't want it, I needed a broad back adjustment that doesn't mess with my shoulders, because I'm actually narrower in the shoulders because I'm a small person, but I needed it broad back. So this is the broad back adjustment that I use for that. And I'm using again, the cashmere at Montrose top. Number one, I needed a broad back adjustment. In it. I was noticing my um, tiger ones just a little, I mean, not horrible, but it just, it just a little bit, like I can feel it when I'm moving my arms forward. So I just wanted to give myself a little bit more room there through the back of that um, shirt pattern. So I'm showing you how I do that pattern uh, adjustment now. Um, as always, let me know if you have any questions and I'll answer those as soon as possible down below. Um, I do have a virtual uh, tip jar, my coffee account, virtual tip jar type thing. If you do enjoy this type of content, um, all the money from that goes right back into the channel with supplies, maintenance, equipment, that kind of thing, mostly for the educational videos such as these. All right, guys, that's all I have for today. I hope you've enjoyed this summer of tutorials. Although I guess technically September we're still doing tutorials. It's just we're gonna be doing pattern hacking ones, so it'll be a little different. <laughs> all right, that's all I have for today, guys. I hope you have a wonderful Sunday, and I will see you again on Tuesday. Bye. Okay, today we are going to do a broad back adjustment, and I'm actually gonna do this on my for real pattern because I've been wearing my Montroses a lot, and I've noticed they're just a little tight around the back. Now, um, this is actually, um, just like last week with the high round back adjustment, that's just it's a posture thing, the same thing for broad back. As we are sitting at computer screens and at sewing machines and at anything else and that forward slumping, um, a lot of times as we age, you where you may not have ever needed a broad back adjustment, now you may because you're just, your back is just rounding a little bit more, um, again, just from posture. Or maybe you're a yoga fanatic and you don't have this issue, but <laughs> I do. Um, and I need to, I want to add, I think I'm just going to add a half of an inch, um, do a half of an inch adjustment. So, um, that will give me plenty of room to, um, the room that I need to, to move. I think that that should be fine. It's not super tight and that would give me a, a inch in total around the back, which I think should be more than enough room for me to kind of move around. Okay, so we've got the Montrose here. This is the um, fold line here. I have gone ahead and marked in my seam allowance on my sleeve, and I'm not sure if you can see that or not, because this is I'm actually doing this for real, so I didn't want to use the markers on this one. Um, so I've marked this in a pencil, but I'll use a pen to do the rest of this. So the first thing, so hopefully you can see it. The first thing I want to do is I want to trace my armhole, okay? So I'm just going to do that really quickly. And I'm tracing uh, the cut edge, not the, the, not the sewing edge, but the cut edge. So just like when we were doing that narrow shoulder adjustment, I'm just going to trace that in. And I'm going to mark just right here at the top, right here at the bottom, and I'm going to mark my notches. Okay, because we're going to need that later. And then, I mean, I can cut this off, but 
We're going to need that for a reference later because we don't want to alter the armhole at all. Okay, so now we need Okay, so now we're gonna make some lines. I'm gonna make my first line, I don't know, below my seam allowance here at the underarm. I mean, no more than an inch. Um, but we're gonna go perpendicular to the grain line, which in this case is the fold line because there's not a seam allowance here in the back. It's just the fold line. So I'm gonna make a line right here. Now we're gonna make a line perpendicular to that. So parallel to the grain line, up to about the middle of your shoulder because this is really where you kind of need the the room okay just like so and now we are going to do another line here right about the notches like right above also perpendicular lots of right angles here i want that to be down there a little bit more okay just like so. Okay, so now we are going to cut our box out. We are cutting at this line. We're gonna leave up here because this is where we need the room, really. And now I'm wondering if maybe I should have gone up higher. So I'm kind of thinking I need it just a little higher. I'm gonna go up just a little higher, sorry. Disregard that. <laughs> I'm gonna go up about two inches above the notches. Second guessing myself here. I want it right about my shoulder blades. Okay, now I'm gonna cut two there and I'm gonna go cut down and then I'm gonna cut from the side seam. So we've cut out this box right here brightly colored paper under here. Okay, and again, I wanna add, what did I say, half of an inch? I'm gonna just tape this paper down. Okay, so I want to add um, a half of an inch. So I'm just going to draw in a half of an inch here. So this is very similar to like raising and lowering a dart. Um, we're just going widthwise instead of up and downwise. So I'm going to do this. So now I've added that extra half of an inch here at the back. So now I'm going to tape it down. And you'll notice, obviously, we're gonna have this half of an inch jog. So that is where this comes in. So we are going to, here, let me just continue taping down this shoulder. Okay, so we are gonna match the top of the shoulder to the top of the shoulder here. And then we're gonna swing this out so that it matches um, the bottom of the, so we've, we've gone out, you know, half of an inch here at the side seam, that's okay. So we're just, so this is the original cut line. So we're just shifting it. So again, you don't have to change the sleeve at all. So now I'm just gonna go in and this does not change things as much as, you know, like a narrow or a broad shoulder adjustment does. Okay. So I've done that with my tracing wheel. So now I can go over, that raise that just a wee bit. And my notches stayed the same pretty much. and back to the regular shoulder point up here. And then here at the side seam, if you really just wanna keep this the way it is, you can um, you know, just kinda cut this off a little bit right there, or 
you know, use your French curve here. I'm not that worried about it. In fact, a little extra room is probably fine. So I'm just going to do this and I'm out of paper here to go into my, there's just going to be a jog there, <laughs> to go into my um, side seam that I had here and that should be fine. So there you go. So I have effectively added a half of an inch, well, a full inch when all is said and done across my back without affecting my shoulder, so my shoulder stays the same. That's been my beef with a lot of the adjustments that you do is that your shoulder, you get that dart that you have to show it, so in, for your shoulder. And I get that that might be the thing that you need, but I'm just gonna cut away this extra paper. You know, on a coat or something, a dart can look really nice, but you know, for my, everyday woven shirt. I don't really want a dart. Although if you want a dart, if you think that that just gives you better shaping, you could definitely do that. But this is the way I like to do a broad back adjustment. And there you go. We've added a half inch and um, yeah, everything else should fit really great um, through there. As always, if you have any questions, please put them down below and I'll answer those as soon as possible. See you guys next time. I hope you've enjoyed this summer of sewing tutorials. There will be more tutorials, just not back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back ones. <laughs>